Hi, I'm Amit Dauzekar from Triveni Electronics and we will briefly have a look at my project uh, which is the loop powered temperature transmitter. So let's look at what a loop powered transmitter is and where is it used. Essentially a loop powered transmitter converts any uh, signal output to an equivalent 4 to 20 milliampere current. A loop powered transmitter gets its uh, supply from either a 24 volt or a 32 volt supply and uh, one of the, the, the positive side of the supply will be going into the loop powered transmitter and the output of the loop power transmitter will then be actually the 4 to 20 milliampere current. Now these, uh, where are all of these uh, loop power transmitters used? They are widely used in uh, process control, industrial automation, essentially the current then will probably go into a PLC which would then be used for uh, uh, indicating the uh, output of the sensor. Now let's, let's look at the loop power transmitter that we have here. What we have here essentially is a two board setup. Uh, we chose to build it that way so that uh, if the if the if if, if the uh, user uh, wanted to operate this transmitter blind, he could just use the display board for calibration and then simply unplug the display board. That would give him considerable savings in his BOM. Now let's look at the components used in this uh, loop power transmitter. Here. This is the uh, MSP430 AFE251. This is really the star of the show. This is an ultra low powered micro with a 24 bit Sigma Delta ADC and uh, differential PGA. This is the XTR115. Essentially, uh, this is uh, just a 4 to 20 milliampere uh, current generator and uh, it's got a 5 volt regulator, regulated output, and a 2.5 volt reference. This is a 3.3 volt regulator from TI which is uh, used to generate the voltages needed to operate the micro. Now, what were the design challenges we really faced in uh, this particular design was that it had to be low cost, had to be very compact, yet had to be optimal performance. So, uh, how did we go about achieving these goals? Well, the uh, MSP helps us in a great way. It itself is a very low current part. Uh, we operated at uh, 1.1 megahertz. That gives us uh, uh, sufficient headroom to do all the signal acquisition as well as drive the display, drive the seven segment display. Now, uh, other than that, because of the uh, in inbuilt uh, 24 bit ADC uh, and the PGA, we were able to uh, uh, use larger resistors for the signal conditioning bridge that uh, allowed us to even lower the currents further yet allowed a significant uh, resolution on the ADC to allow the RTD to be measured from minus 100 to 400 degrees with 0.1 degree resolution. Now in this the display multiplexing uh, we have an uh, SN74 LV 574 which is essentially an uh, octal edge trigger D type flip flop. Here it is used as a shift resistor. We had this implementation because uh, uh, you know this allowed us uh, very few pins to be carried from the lower board to the upper board. Here also we have a smart algorithm which runs instead of your typical multiplexing of the display of being digit by digit we have it segment by segment and any segment which is not lit is then skipped. So that allows the display to appear brighter than it normally would. So and also we wanted to uh, you know make the programming uh, uh, you know more uh, cost effective. So we, we, we provided a programming header here which allows us to uh, interface the launchpad board to program this whole PCB. Hence you know providing an optimal solution to the end user. So now we will enter the calibration mode for the transmitter and let's see how the calibrations are performed. Yeah now this is showing RT low which is the low point for the RTD. So on this uh, resistance simulator we have to put the RTD at minus 100 degrees and press the enter key. Once that is done the low point will be calibrated. Then after that the next point is the high point. Now here we have to put the uh, RTD at uh, 400 degrees and hit the enter key. That way the high point will get calibrated. Then we come to the K type thermocouple. This is the low point for the thermocouple. Here we have to feed in 0 millivolts at the input and again hit the enter key. Similarly this is the high point for the thermocouple. Here we have to feed in 48.84 millivolts and hit the enter key. 
After this, we come to the ambient setting, which is the cold junction compensation. Here we have to set the ambient that may be uh, there at the current time. Here it is about 27 degrees, so I will set 27 degrees. Then we come to the output loop current calibration. This is the zero point for that. Now, as you can see, simply by there are, there are no moving, there is no trim pots in this, so all of this can be adjusted simply by using the the keys. Now, here by increasing or decreasing this figure I can actually change the current now say it's 4.7 4.07 milliamps as I change this figure this current will rise and as I decrease this figure this current will decrease so it's a simple two-point calibration where I have a zero and a full-scale setting that's it now this is the span setting here this is for 20 milliamps same way I can simply use the up and down keys to come to 20 milliamps. If I decrease it, it will go lower and if I increase it, it will come to 20 milliamps. Then here we select the various sensors, RTD, J-type, K-type. This is the retransmission range. Here for the RTD, it can it can be programmed to any anything. Uh, say you could trans retransmit from 0 to 100 degrees. Now in this case it is uh, set for 0 to 400 degrees. This is the high range for it is 400 degrees of course I can change that to whatever I want but we leave it at 400 right now and this is an offset this is an offset setting is to add a small offset to the uh, to the temperature reading just in case after calibration you have some some sort of uh, difference and uh, that that's where we are right now so we are at 0 degrees this is uh, at, at, at 0 degrees the clip and uh, this is indicating 0 and the current is at 4 milliamps now we'll move this to 100 degrees this is now at 100 degrees and the the TX is indicating about 100 degrees and here we have 8 milliamps similarly now we will move this to point 200 degrees this is now at 200 degrees the TX is indicating about 200 degrees and we have nearly about 12 milliamps of current similarly now we will move this to 300 degrees the TX is indicating approximately 300 degrees and we have a current which is nearly 16 milliamps. So that's it folks. Thanks for watching.